Hello, dear friends and colleagues. Congratulations to you all, the 50th meeting of APEC TEL, TEL 50. It is a great achievement for the TEL to reach this memorable 50th meeting, 24 years after its first one in 1990. I believe that this is brought by members' enthusiasm and continuous commitment towards the objectives of the TEL. During my tenure of office from TEL 44 to TEL 47, the TEL discussed and shared the knowledge and experience on many issues such as developing ICT to promote new growth and promoting safe and trusted ICT environment under the Minister's instruction at TEL 9 in 2012. I am sure that the role of the TEL will become more and more essential for the people in the region, since ICT is one of the most important infrastructures in our society. On this memorable occasion of TEL 50, I sincerely wish that the TEL will continue further enhancing its activities and contributing to the economic integration and development in the Asia-Pacific region. Thank you. Hi, everybody. First of all, I'd like to congratulate APEC TEL for holding its 50th meeting. It was really a great privilege for me to serve as TEL chair between 2009 and 2011. For me, those years was really a challenging but rewarding experience. As you recall, with the fast-changing ICT environment, we were confronted with the issues of how to reduce the digital divide, improve ways to regulate, and ensure a safe online environment, and most importantly, to seek to extend the benefits of ICT to our economic and social growth. I should say, TEL responded with vision and actions. We shared actively our experience and information on policies, regulations, and developments, which greatly enhanced our mutual understanding and broadened our perspectives. We accomplished the main projects, which covered a wide spectrum of issues, and resulted in quite a number of guidelines, best practice, and initiatives. The 2010 to 2015 Strategic Action Plan, which we worked with great efforts, served as an important roadmap for the work of TEL. I cherish the way TEL works, which I think is cooperative, efficient, and flexible. And I would hope that TEL maintains its momentum as it continues to move forward. Thank you, Rick. Hello. I'm Dr. Enoch Chung of Republic of Korea. As a former chair, I'm so honored and delighted to make this message to celebrate 50th meeting of the APEC TEL with you. I have a very fond memory of passion and hard work of my TEL colleagues and friends throughout my tenure as a chair and participant to the meetings. I still appreciate the efforts and I miss them all. This kind of joint effort among participants has been the key to success with APEC TEL in the past and I'm sure this will be the same in the future. We all know that human resource is the most valuable asset in the TEL. I sincerely hope you and I together Keep this spirit of harmony for many years to come for the continuous success of the, our tell for another 50 meetings. Thank you very much and I miss you all. Mr. Thwaites, uh, formerly of this Department of Communications in Canberra and I was the tell chair from 2001 to 2003. I'm very happy that it has. I'm very pleased to see that it's still considered to be uh, a worthwhile and valuable activity for the governments of our region to put their effort into. It wasn't always assured. Uh, there, were, there was a period um, when people were wondering whether the TEL was, in fact APEC broadly, was going to survive uh, because so many new processes kept 
coming up uh, with different memberships and overlapping memberships and so forth. But uh, I do believe it's a, it's a testimony to the value of the APEC way of working and uh, the TELS particular way of doing that, uh, that there's been a strong demand from the industries and from the government officials for the value that the TEL keeps producing. Well, the time when I took up the chair was a, a, a very critical watershed, actually, because, in fact, the first meeting that I had the privilege of, of chairing was in Jeju, Korea, and it was only a few days after the 9-11 events in New York. Uh, there were almost no Americans there because all their airports were still closed and so forth. And, you know, this was a big change in the whole atmosphere of international relations and collaboration. Uh, so uh, it was... Um, uh, people weren't sure what was going to, to happen, uh, but the value of the tell being something where what you do is collaborate, share experience, and not try to force uh, agreements or to force your view on others turned out to be an, an enduring and, and, and valuable process that's still being appreciated. The issue really is what APEC tells unique contribution has been uh, in that very complex, multifaceted process. And uh, in my view, it has been confidence building. Uh, during my experience, the peak of it really was uh, during the time when the World Trade Organization General Agreement on Trade and Services was finalising its um, annex on telecommunications. And many countries were very suspicious. Most countries still had monopoly state-owned carriers. Uh, and to work out how we were going to get uh, an improved mode of trade in telecommunications services um, was, was difficult. And in that process, in our part of the world, uh, APEC Tel played a big role in uh, sharing the experience of those who'd gone somewhere down the path with those who were just looking at it, often suspiciously, and it resulted in a very strong participation from our part of the world and from the APEC membership in that, in that important agreement which set baselines that have really still been the basis of where we are now. Well, one of them was how to address the new emphasis on... Uh, security and telecommunications, uh, particularly after the 9-11 uh, and so forth, raised everybody's hackles and adrenaline and gave everyone a sort of security focus that had been only in the background up to that point. Um, but another key issue has been that, again, it may, it may seem strange looking back from this point of time, but uh, in the early days when I was involved in TEL and up to the time of my... Of my uh, chairmanship, uh, there was a lot of doubt as to whether the internet was actually part of telecommunications. You know, there, were, there were countries who would furiously say, no, no, it's just a value-added service and it shouldn't be included in any of our telecommunication trade arrangements and so forth. Um, uh, not surprisingly, they were the, those are the ones that had greatest ownership of internet infrastructure at the time. But I think it's there's been a process now where clearly no one would dream of thinking that you could talk about telecommunications without talking about the internet and all the services that uh, ride upon it. So that was a significant transition. And again, a forum like the TEL where it's a matter of open discussion, sharing of experience and developing consensus rather than trying to you know, nail things down, uh, I think that contribution has been very valuable. Well, I think every part of the E, the economy, which is what the, the E in APEC, um, is now intrinsically affected by uh, the changes in electronic commerce and all the things that happened thanks to telecommunication and the role of telecommunication as a, one of the two or three core infrastructures is, is fully appreciated everywhere. So that really means that the role for something like the TEL is, is clearly secure, uh, where the focus points is going to change, who knows in what way. At the moment there's clearly a strong interest in cyber security and those kind of issues. 
those were peripheral issues when we began. It was about how do you actually organise infrastructures to deal with each other fairly across national borders. Um, that's still, you know, there are still issues there, but uh, where it will go next, um, is privacy going to be a big issue? You know, we see all kinds of problems around different ideas of intellectual property and so forth. I think there's never going to be an end to, to an agenda for the tell. The focus is always on finding points in common and building consensus and uh, sharing experience. And uh, this is much, much better than approaching everything from a zero-sum, I win, you lose type of uh, approach, which some of the other international processes cannot avoid. Hello, everyone. I'm Valerie da Costa. I was the Apex Tel chair from Singapore. I think my tenure was from 1999 to 2001. I want to congratulate you on reaching your 50th meeting. I think that's great news. Um, I think APEC-TEL is simply growing from strength to strength. And I have very, very fond memories and strong, a strong sense of professional achievement from my time as the chair. I remember very well that I was the first chair from the opposite side of the Pacific Pond and I was also the first woman to chair apec -TEL. So I think that that reflects really the diversity and the strength of the APEC community. I know that that made a big impact as well in how we all collectively made decisions uh, for TEL and from there there's been an incredible and enormous groundswell of uh, achievement by the group. I wanted to mention that in the more than 10 or 12 or 15 years that I've been involved in APEC TEL and, and in the way my career has gone since then, that I reflect very deeply on what it means to really have strong international engagement and collaboration and the more I work the more I realize that when it's done in the spirit of collaboration and mutual trust where all parties bring something to the table and all parties have a mutual interest in success and conclusion things work better so I wish you all um, an incredible journey going forward I wish tell continued success uh, and I send you all great uh, greetings uh, from here in Washington, D.C. Bye-bye. First of all, uh, I'd like to say hello to all of my friends and colleagues in the APEC community, in particular the APEC TEL. It was a great honor and pleasure for me to have been the first chair of, of the APEC TEL. And I would like to, in that regard, recognize my vice chair during those years, Kuhn Setaporn, who made a great contribution to the success of the APEC TEL. You know, we began the TEL with only 40, about 40 uh, participants in the original meeting that took place in July in 1990. And at that time, we developed an agenda that included uh, customs, e-commerce, and mutual recognition agreements. And our hope was that we would facilitate the integration of the region from the point of view of trade and telecommunications. I also believe that in that agenda, we anticipated the internet revolution that ultimately came about. I'm pleased to say that, that from that original 40 participants, the APEC TEL has grown to be regarded as one of the great successes of APEC, and that is a compliment to all of you who have contributed. In conclusion, I would like to congratulate you. You all have worked in a way to make the APEC tell, as I have said, one of the outstanding working groups of APEC from its beginnings in 1990. And I wish you all the success in your next 50 meetings. Thank you.